Hi, my name is Royce and I'm a first year MD-PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to be talking about the Med School Personal Statement. This includes the MCAS prompt and how you should respond, the structure of the personal statement, and a recommended approach that you can follow when you start writing. So let's get started. The personal statement is 5,300 characters long, including spaces. This is part of your MCAS primary, so it's the same generic essay sent to all schools. And if you have any questions about the MCAS or the Med School application timeline, please check out my other video that will probably pop up uh, right here. The prompt itself is very vague and doesn't provide the clearest instructions on how to respond. But my opinion is that your essay should achieve two goals. The first is that it should show your qualities that would make you a good physician in the future. And this includes empathy and a dedication to service. And the second is that it should show your reasons for pursuing a career in medicine. Look at it from the perspective of admissions committees. They want students who will be good doctors in the future and are completely committed to the career path. So with this personal statement, it should be your goal to show that you know what you're getting yourself into and are nonetheless still completely committed to becoming a physician. There are many ways to organize your essay to achieve these two goals, and one possible way is to organize it chronologically, which is what I did. And by the way, my next video will be on my personal statement that I wrote, so stay tuned for that. And a side note for those applying MD-PhD, treat this essay as an MD essay. This essay will primarily be read by the MD admissions committee, and as such, you should tailor it to them. Definitely include a brief paragraph on your research but spare the technical details. You have plenty of space in your two additional essays to talk about your love for science and the technical details of your research projects. Okay, now let's talk about the structure of the personal statement. The personal statement should be episodic. You wanna show and not tell. For example, don't say, I had empathy and compassion when working with this patient. Instead, include specific actions of how you showed empathy. For example, you could say, I listened to the patient's concerns and ask him questions to better understand his support network at home. So the idea here is to talk concretely and not abstractly. So let's say you're talking about one volunteering activity. You should pick one anecdote that perfectly encapsulates, perfectly exemplifies the overall experience. So for example, when I was working for an outpatient cancer clinic, I saw many patients, obviously, over many months. But for the sake of my essay, I only included one patient encounter that left an impression on me. So this is one episode, and your entire personal statement should have three or four episodes total. Of course, this is a rule of thumb and can vary depending on your situation. Another important thing to note is that the experiences themselves don't have to be super compelling, super riveting, uh, lives don't have to be on the line. Your stories can be mundane. What's important is the characteristics that you demonstrate. In other words, the plot is not as important as the character development. And so this would be what distinguishes a uh, big budget blockbuster movie like Transformers from an actually good movie. And keep in mind, the intro is just another one of your three or four episodes, but it does have to be a little more compelling in order to grab the reader's attention. So in that case, the plot is a little bit more important. In the conclusion, just provide summaries and analysis for all three or four of your episodes. And in this case, it is okay to be explicit. So you can't say, for example, that uh, you know the patient encounter in paragraph two taught me the importance of physical presence uh, in the practice of medicine. And now let's talk about a recommended approach you can follow when you start writing your personal statement. And obviously everyone has their own writing process and writing ritual, so do whatever you're comfortable with. Step one is to outline. Brainstorm your three or four episodes, put them in columns in a table. For example, one episode could be from when you researched in a genetics lab, and another episode could be when you scribed, and another one can be when you volunteered at a hospital. And for each episode, provide a brief description, what it taught you about medicine, and what personal characteristics you believe you demonstrated in those episodes. Keep in mind you can always play essay Tetris later, rearranging things to improve the logical progression of your essay. The most important thing I can say right now is that brainstorming takes patience. I believe everyone's life story is interesting, it's just a matter of taking the time to sit down and think about it to discover how. The second step is the free write. For each of your three or four episodes, write down as much as you can, whatever comes to mind. Don't worry about things like grammar or sentence structure or word count. In fact, it's probably better that your free write draft is longer than the actual thing because you can cut it down later. Treat this step like you're journaling in a diary. Step number three is editing. Start cutting down your essay to fit the 5300 character limit and start editing it, such as by varying sentence structure and varying verbiage to make the essay easier to read. Step number four is peer editing. Send your rough draft to friends, family, classmates, school advisors. The goal here is to get feedback from many people with differing perspectives so that by the end of it, you'll have a refined version of your essay. Now I just wanna to touch on a few common misconceptions about the personal statement. You don't need to be a good writer. In my opinion, the ideas that you put forth are more important 
than the pros itself. You don't need to have personal illness or personal experience uh, as a patient in order to write a compelling story. And like I said before, the plot is not as important as the character development that you show. Don't just list all your achievements. That's what the activity section in the AMCAS is for. Schools already have this information. And finally, you don't have to portray yourself as this flawless person. In fact, I feel like it's better to have a lower starting point so that throughout the essay you can show some level of growth. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you later.